Hello, Buffs, and happy high noon Thursday to you. Welcome back to Mental Training Thursdays with the PHP staff. We're really glad for you to join us, whether live or if you're watching this recording. Um, today's topic is radical recovery and really focusing on how to rest now for challenge later. But as usual in our little webinars, before we dive into that, we have a question to kick it off that Chris will read off from a student athlete. And this is from last week's session on gratefulness as the cornerstone of resilience. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, this week, real simple question. How can we be grateful when everything sucks? Well, first and foremost, <laughs> That question does not suck. I think it's a, it's a perfect question to kind of bring in here from the student athlete. I think it's a really honest question as well. Um, I think many times when we talk about gratitude, it can kind of fall into this category of maybe the, the self-help section of the Amazon store or the bookstore if we're actually you know going to a physical one. And many times it's really just focusing blindly on the positive without looking at the real challenges that we're facing right now. So just to echo, you know, maybe the student athlete's reaction, there are so many challenges that, that we're facing during this time. There's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of change happening, heading into the election, continued racial injustice, the pandemic, you name it, it's all showing up for us. And so one of the things that we just wanna harken back to, I think from last week is introducing this idea of both and. And so shout out to Mac for this metaphor, but if we think of it as a seesaw or teeter totter, depending on what you wanna call it, um, you know, many times if we're just dwelling in the positive of what's going well, we're not really addressing the challenges in our lives. We're kind of just staying stuck um, blindly in that versus if we're only looking at what's, what's challenging and just kind of staying stuck in that, many times, you know, there's no space for how do we deal with those challenges? You know, what are the things that we need to keep moving forward? So in many ways, we want to kind of find a balancing act between the two. So similar if we were recovering from an injury, you know, if I had torn my ACL, which I did, you know, in my sport career, you know, I wouldn't just let that be. That's something that I would address head on, but I also need some other things to kind of fill me up to continue to move through that recovery process. Gratefulness being one of them, you know, what are those little things that make, you know, my day-to-day -day suck just a little bit less, you know, to the student athlete's question to move forward. And I think it segues, you know, nicely in some ways to today's topic about radical recovery of, you know, challenges are coming up, challenges are already here. So what are the ways that we can create space, fuel, things that we need to keep moving forward and navigating these challenges skillfully. And I think I love the, the weave in that you just added, Bob, that I'm going to add a little bit more to about the parallel with injury and recovery and how there, there's a progression there and it can be this back and forth seesaw, teeter-totter kind of progression of, I feel so grateful that like, I don't have my crutches anymore and now I can, you know, walk more freely, but then you could have that, oh, but wait a minute, even though I'm grateful for that, I'm still very far away from where I want to be physically and as far as back to my competition. So you can kind of feel that like tug of war of I'm grateful for this, but it still sucks. And I, you know, want this, but I'm over here. And, you know, I think that, you know, it's, it's a wonderful segue into the rattle, radical recovery and that recovery and what we need to recover can involve many different layers. And that I think goes hand in hand with what we, we were just talking about in regard to that athlete's question, which is that, you know, when we think about things broadly, like everything sucks, it's not getting into the layered complexity of what is and how a lot of those things you know, don't have to necessarily be all one thing or the other. And so, um, you know, shifting into what we're going to do today, we, we're talking about radical recovery in our Mental Lift Monday and how there are those different levels of needs that you can tend to to help recover. And so things like, what does my mind need? What does my heart need? Who do I need? Um, are really important aspects. Um, you know, what does my 
physical body need today. These are all really important areas and levels to touch on. And one thing that we were thinking about that we wanted to bring to you today as far as a, a training opportunity and a skill to further get additional reps on was doing a body scan. So this is something that we've referenced and used in small ways in other trainings that we've done on Mental Training Thursday, but we haven't necessarily had a focused strategic way to explain and go through a body scan in and of itself. So we wanted to um, you know, delve into that further today, um, add that tool to your toolbox and be able to have that be something that you can use to really do that assessment of what might I need and what is my body telling me that I need and being able to check in on those different areas and do those assessments so that you can attend to them to the best of your ability. Um, especially because as Bob was talking about that seesaw and how like you could be on one side saying everything's fine. Well, you could be saying that, but your body might be saying, uh, I don't know about that because I feel this like tight constriction in my chest, but I'm trying to say that everything's fine. But meanwhile, my, my body is telling me something different. So it, we want to have you all know a way to do that check-in. Um, and see if things are in alignment or if maybe there's a cue there that's telling you something might be needed and tended to. So um, we're gonna do this brief body scan and I'm gonna walk you through it. Um, so like most of our exercises, this is something that you're welcome to close your eyes for if that feels comfortable for you. Um, this is one that you certainly can leave your eyes open and just pick a spot to gently rest your focus on um, kind of low and in front of you um, so that you can just have a gentle gaze there. And just take a moment to, you know, settle yourself in whatever position you're in, whether that's sitting on a chair or if you're laying down somewhere, um, what, whatever feels like it's comfortable and supportive of your body and allows you to be able to make some room and space for checking in with yourself. So as we, we do in most of our exercises, it's helpful just to ground yourself in the moment by just noticing and observing your breath. You don't have to change anything about it, but just be aware of it, the way it feels, the way it sounds, the movement that it creates in your body. And without changing your breath, just set an intention for the next breath or two that you are gonna use this time to create some space and awareness within yourself. You're gonna be using this time to check in with yourself. And to start, imagine starting at the top of your head. So you can imagine your scalp and Imagine almost like scanning, you're gonna be like, almost like a, a photo scanner or a copy scanner. You're gonna be slowly scanning, starting from the top of your head. And I'm gonna walk you through various points in your body. And as you scan through, you can ask yourself a couple of different questions, such as, what do I notice? What do I feel? Is there, is there any information here that would be helpful for me to check in on, spend a little time on, or come back to? So having kind of those prompts in mind, starting with your head and your scalp, just imagine scanning down over your forehead Noticing if there's any tension there or holding. And even through, down and through your jaw. And kind of sweeping around the back of your neck. And scanning down into your shoulders. And into your back. 
And again, kind of sweeping that scanner around to your chest. And in particular in your chest into your heart. So thinking about both how your heart feels, but also think about your heart from an emotional sense and checking in in emotionally what you might be feeling or needing or noticing right now. And then scanning down a little further into your gut. And even imagining the scanner moving across your arms from your shoulders all the way down through to your fingers. And coming back again to your core, moving further down from your gut into your hips and low back. Scanning through your legs, quads and hamstrings, through your knees, through your calves and shins, all the way down through your ankles into your toes. And now if you'd like uh, an additional piece that you can add to your body scan, now that you've gone from head to toe is you can go reverse and move your way back up and do another scan just to check and see and make sure that you've checked in with all the areas, all the feelings, all the senses. So you can, you can always take the time to scan back up and go in reverse if that'd be helpful. And at whatever point you feel like you've, you've completed your scan, you've acquired any information in that process, find yourself settling again back into your breathing, becoming aware of, of that experience in your body. And just take a moment to express thankfulness and gratitude to yourself for taking the time to check in with yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally with this body scan. And know that this information is something that you can utilize moving forward, that it's there to help you, to help guide you in anything that you might need, to let you know any areas that might need some recovery and loving kindness. And with that, you can take another breath or two, and whenever it feels comfortable, you can bring yourself back to the present moment. Awesome. Thanks so much, Mac. I know for me, um, the seesaw feels a little more balanced in this moment, and we hope the same for you all, or just noticing what end of the seesaw you may be more on and what you need. Um, as always, you know, please do reach out with any questions you have. We love the questions we've been getting from student athletes. You can send that to me, Bob Deal at robert.deal, D-I-E-H-L, at colorado.edu. Um, just so you know, uh, next week we're going to be off to create space for the post-election dialogue with Professor Joe Japil. But in two weeks, we're going to be back with our topic of resilience as a team sport. Um, but before we end, I wanted to just share a quote with you all. This is from the Boulder Buffs, actually. This is our peer mental health advocacy group uh, within CU Athletics. And this is one of the, the sayings that they had on, on one of their t-shirts and one of the sayings that they came up with um, to create space around challenge. And it goes like this, it's okay to not be okay. And so we really encourage you to just tune in to what's going on for you uh, during this time. And so appreciate your attention, your presence and building a community of resilience together and go Buffs. See you next time.